Hey, I'm Alec, and today I'm going to show you how to turn a 3D scan into a bust. Matter Hackers carries a variety of 3D scanners like the Matter Inform and the BQ Cyclops. Those are really meant for action figure size scans that you intend to print later and aren't really designed for very precise accuracy and trying to print something really advanced. Whereas the 3D Sense scanner is designed for people sized uh, objects that you're trying to scan or scan something on a desk and have a bit more control over how you are scanning. So it works really well to scan people whether it's just a portrait or it's a full body and since we don't have a lot of prints floating around the office that utilize scanning we get questions about what does a scan look like when it's uh, printed. So I decided to incorporate two different things. The project I've had in mind of a 3D printed organization chart because Matter Hackers has been growing quite extensively uh, since I first started and incorporating scanners into that by scanning people, printing it in their favorite color, cleaning up the model, and then being able to hang these up on the wall. So the first step for this project was trying to figure out exactly how I wanted to mount these on the wall. So I knew I needed some form of a flat back and I experimented with a couple different ideas. These as they are, the back of this is the very furthest back point. So even though that the back of my neck here is close, this is still what would touch the wall first. So I can put an adhesive strip here. Uh, I'm gonna use a uh, hook and loop style adhesive to attach this on the wall, be able to rearrange it. Um, but I also tried using like a Greco-Roman pillar and putting the head on top of it, but that didn't have a real good way to mount on the wall. I tried doing like a, like you'd have like a deer mount where it's like a shield, but I just looked kind of weird to have all of our heads like a mount, like it didn't look right. So the box seemed like the best way to go. Now that I knew how I wanted to mount it, I went ahead and used the matter control design tools to create a box in the size I wanted, which is 75 by 75 by 25 millimeters. Then I used the text align and fit to bounds so that I could change the name and the title without having to remodel this every single time I do another person, somebody gets a title change, anything like that. It'd just be really easy for me to come back in there, change the text and have it auto populate, center everything and keep everything well aligned. Busts can be very unique in how they are actually structured. Some are just cut at the torso, some have, uh, they follow like the contours of your, the person's shirt. There's all sorts of different ways to actually create a bust where it doesn't have the full body of somebody. But to do this specific curve here where it's got the curves on the front and then the curve along the back, I just went into Fusion 360 and modeled a shape that would cut out this from the model and then I looked from the front and did the same this way. But instead of cutting it from this, I made a block that was the actual shape I wanted to cut out. That way I could take all of the 3D scans, put them with the cutaway, and then subtract the cutaway from it, leaving just this behind. So it really sped up my process to make a base template that I could use and subtract from everything at that point. So now it was time to start scanning, and the best advice I could give you is get a six foot USB extension cable, they're pretty cheap, and what this will do is just give you a lot more room to get around somebody, because even though it might make sense to put a person on a office chair and just rotate that as you stand still, I think what actually happens is that the acceler there's an accelerometer in the sense, so when it doesn't sense that the scanner is moving but the person is, it just sort of morphs the person so that the, the shape is just being revolved instead of it actually being like scanning each side of it. So it works better to move you around the person than it is to move the person themselves. So just get a chair with a low back, get an extension cord for the sense scanner, and then just scan the person going around, making sure to get the top of the head, under the neck, behind the ears, and try to get all sorts of features. Uh, you don't want to go over surfaces more than once because then it may like mesh things weird and you may get like crooked noses. And when you're done scanning, since you're gonna be further away from your desk and won't be able to pause this easily, I just take my hand and cover the sensor which causes it to lose tracking and stop gathering data. So that just means that I'm not going to have random bits of information that it's trying to interpolate into the body. While well, 3D Sense does a really good job at getting a base model, it usually has some sort of issues. For most people, parts in their hair or their cheeks usually end up having deep canyons just because those are areas that tend to be a bit glossier than the rest. 
So the scent scanner works really well when you have uh, matte finishes. So sometimes you'll dust something with a fine powder to try and bring down the shine. If you're scanning an object, sometimes people will paint it in a matte finish primer or something like that. So it scans a lot better because the scanner doesn't do too well with gloss. However, we can go in a mesh mixer and very easily repair these without really being able to tell that this, there was an issue in the first place. So when I'm in mesh mixer, I usually only use Draw Plus or Bubble Smooth. I'll use Draw Plus to add material and Bubble Smooth to reduce the material that I've added. So there is going to be some areas like earlobes where they may extend too far. I'll use Bubble Smooth to push that back in towards the ear so it's not drooping as low. And I'll use Draw Plus to pull out those valleys and those canyons so that they are flush with the surface close enough. Then I'll use Bubble Smooth to go back over and clean that up. Now, you can use Bubble Smooth as your secondary tool, which would mean that you could just click Shift, hold that down, and then instantaneously switch between the two different brushes. So it makes it really easy to go between adding material here, smoothing it out, adding a little more, and smoothing it out. It's just a bit like modeling with clay. It's just using a computer. So once you have Draw Plus and Bubble Smooth worked out, you're gonna wanna go back and forth and be careful not to add too much or to subtract too little. And you can use strength, depth, size, all sorts of different presets and configurations like that to figure it out. It'll just take a little playing with. I like to keep my size at about 30 and my strength at about 50 when I'm using either tool. So now that I have the models cleaned up, I'll export them as an STL and then import them into NetFab. So here I can use a Boolean to very precisely, well, first line up the bust with the cutaway and then be able to adjust it so that it's centered because you may find that even though the model is centered with the origin, the splitting line between the person may be over here. So you may need to shift the scan a little to the side to actually line it up with the cutaway so you don't have a weird cutout where their shoulder's like this when you're done with the cutaway. So just a little bit of play and it's really easy to use in NetFab. You can just type in the exact X or Y distance you wanna shift things and you'll just play with that to get the cutaway to be at just the right position. So now that I have the cutaway subtracted from the bust, I can import the bust back into Matter Control and continue using design tools to align things and create this little connector that goes between the two. That way I can swap out if someone wants to print their bust in a different color. It's really easy to just reprint it, put it on here, and not have to reprint the entire thing every time something changes. And to do that, I just align the box with the center of the X and the center of the Y and the top of the Z and then added some offsets here and there so that everything lined up and I made sure that the bust wasn't past the back of this and then that just kept everything nice and solid. I'm using all these different filaments and different colors to help decorate the office and while this is a very specific project you could absolutely use this for your own like you're going to scan your office or scan your family and make small busts you can give away of them that they can decorate their house with or take models that already exist online of video game characters or movie characters, superheroes, and create busts of them. Now that there's this process really ironed out, it's pretty easy to be able to take like Master Chief and turn him into a bust in only a couple minutes. So whether you're scanning somebody you know or you're taking a 3D model that already exists, I'd love to see whatever bust you can come up with. Feel free to tag us on social media because I will definitely be watching. I'm Alex from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all of our videos. And remember, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.